we gotta read this. Are we having fun yet? Has Brian Wright been good or bad? That is the question that we will be attempting to answer today. Has your boy been good or bad for the San Antonio Spurs? Now, I found this article and I definitely want to talk to you guys about it because I just found the title interesting. I have not read the article at all, but I definitely want to read it and then give my thoughts on it. But before I do, listen, okay, listen, all right? If you already know about the giveaway, just, just skip this part, all right? Please, just, just skip it, all right? Don't complain in the comments, just skip it. Okay, so we're going to be doing a giveaway Friday. I do a monthly giveaway like every single month. Um, and this month, we're going to be giving away this DeJounte Murray City Edition jersey that was sent to me by a patron. And the patron said you can either keep it or you can give it away. And I have elected to give it away. So if you guys want to support the channel while also entering the giveaway, all you have to do is become a patron member. Only $2 per month. Um, so if you become a patron member or YouTube member, okay, you are going to be entered into the giveaway um, every month I do this, so this is nothing new. It's just now I'm more so announcing the prizes. We've been doing it for like four months now. But anyways, let's go ahead and get straight into this article. So has Brian Wright done a good job as the Spurs GM? So I have my initial thoughts on this, okay? I already have an opinion on Brian Wright, but I definitely wanted to at least look at what your boy Cal Durrett, I hope I said that right, has to say about Brian Wright and giving us more of an objective approach, hopefully, to how he has done. So let's go ahead and go through this. So this is going to be uh, semi-lengthy, not really, but we'll go through it. All right. Since the end of last season, San Antonio Spurs general manager Brian Wright has been hard at work reshaping the team's roster. That he has, and a lot of Spurs fans are not happy. In fact... Just this past week, he completed a three-team trade that sent Brent Forbes to the Denver Nuggets. Now, that right there, I will sit back and I will say, I don't know what's going on yet. I'm, I'm, holding, I'm holding all my opinions on this trade. Uh, now, with nearly three years under his belt as GM, and I, I would say only three, uh, he's starting to build a resume while his reputation among Spurs fans remain mixed. I don't think it's mixed at all. I think it's more so Spurs fans do not like him. Like, if, if we're looking at this image right now, uh, yeah, this is how the Spurs fans see him right here. All right, uh, that's understandable, understandable considering his predecessor, True, R.C. Buford, built four championship teams and was also named Executive of the Year twice. Wow. He should have been Executive of the Year at least four times. While Wright has big shoes to fill, is he underperforming as GM of the Spurs uh, or has he stealthily, uh, I could never say the word, been good? All right, Wright officially took over the summer of 2019, but reportedly had a hand in the Kawhi Leonard trade process. So I'll include Leonard. Yeah, he did have a hand in that. All right, so after all, San Antonio got two current starters out of the deal and later flipped DeMar DeRozan to the Bulls for Thaddeus Young, a 2025 first and two second round picks. And while the Raptors won a championship in 2019, the Spurs have, or, or have a chance, yeah, I said that's right, uh, re retroactively win the deal. A lot will depend on how Jakob Keldon and the three picks acquired in the DeRozan trade ultimately turn out. Uh, that already makes the Leonard deal a big win for Wright, but what about some other moves he's made? And I, I completely agree with this. I, I've said this already before that we definitely won that trade. Some people have actually questioned this with the whole Toronto rap. Look, man, look, I, I don't like to. I'm not just going to take away championships. All right. We, we know Lord knows that your boy Phil Jackson tried to take away a championship from us in the 1999. All right. So I'm, I'm not going to necessarily take it away. But look, this championship that the Raptors won, it was definitely a little bit of luck and it was really good GM work on their part but at the end of the day they they got a championship out of it and that's great but we had Kawhi and we got a championship so I, I don't know I'm not tripping about that all right yes see the many moves of Brian Wright since taking over as GM Wright has drafted four players Devin Fassell Trey Jones Josh Primo and Joe Weezy so far all of those picks have appeared to be the right choices. For instance, Fasel has already shown plenty of potential and could end up being one of the best players in the draft class, while Primo is looking more and more like a smart selection. 
Um, I agree. Uh, Wright will have three more picks in this year's draft, including a possible top five pick. Woo, that's going to be nice. We, we, we're going live, by the way, during that, uh, which could prove crucial to the team's long-term success. However, given his draft track record, the Spurs have a good chance of selecting a great player either way. I mean, we, we always we always choose the right player i mean most of the time okay most of the time right also did well to acquire a second round pick in the upcoming draft that would likely be a high pick from the detroit pistons uh armed with this Wright could trade up into the late first round and give the spurs a second first round pick or he could uh package it with the spurs lottery pick to try and move up into the top three of the draft thus giving the team plenty of options Wright has done an excellent job of making deals that pay dividends down the road. And I think that's been kind of the main thing. We're going to skip some of this because they're just going to talk about Denver a little bit. But that is that is the main thing with Brian Wright. In, in my opinion, some of these decisions that he's made, it's just way too soon to make an opinion on it. Like, there's so many people saying he suck at GM, but I don't think that that's fair at all because a lot of the things that he's been doing is just getting picks. A lot of good picks. So, I... I it, it's kind of down the line and obviously we're kind of like what have you done for me lately type mindset but honestly dude it, it, it's not it's not enough time to really judge him on that aspect because yeah we don't know what these picks are going to become i will say this though uh devin facel trey jones josh primo and joe Weezy, fabulous choices i feel like trey jones was the safest and what i mean by that is that you know that he's going to be a solid backup point guard in the NBA. I, I don't think he's going anywhere. He's just that type of playing style. He's fundamentally he's he's solid. Plays good defense. Plays hard. He, he's just going to be a solid backup backup point guard. But I don't think he'll be a superstar by any means. And, and he's a smart player. But then you take like Devin Fassell, and it's like that's a little bit of a gamble. A little bit. Uh, quite a few people were upset about this pick initially. Um, but obviously this is this is panning out josh primo was a huge whoopsie like people were not happy about that and then joe wheezy um i feel like that's another just solid uh pick right there just just a nice stretch is he a big man i, I think he's more of a three but some people put him at four i don't know all right next slide all right where brian Wright right has gone wrong all right so here we go all right you guys ready all right let's do this Wright worked out a clever three-team deal that allowed for the Spurs to preserve their MLE, which was originally uh, uh, designated for Damari Carroll to sign Marcus Morris. That was terrible. Honestly, was that really our fault? And on, and I'll say this too. Brian Wright was really early into his role, right? Like, he's still learning. But then again, I don't know if there was anything he could have done to prevent that i mean even popovich was pretty upset about that when he found out like he's preparing pop looks at footage he gets ready for the season and just to find out that oh Mar i'm not going to be coaching marcus morris now i have to think of a different plan for this team going forward and we have to find a different way to win so that was a very frustrating uh that left the spurs holding the bag after having traded sharp uh sharpshooter davis bertans as part of a deal in the hopes of upgrading the spurs defense right pivoted by signing trey lyles i don't even think that was a bad i know a lot of people say that was a bad pick. i don't think trey lyles initially was a bad pickup I, I feel like it made a lot of sense at the time who was the next best power forward option remaining in free agency at the time lyles ultimately didn't pan out and is now uh playing in the land of former spurs otherwise known as detroit carol didn't span out either and okay so the carol situation i think and you guys know i love me some pop i think the carol situation was more so pop going in a different direction but also yeah you have to get on the right about this because damari carroll just he wasn't that good hey you want you want to know a fun fact i'm sorry this is like off i don't have a script but this is kind of off script all right so damari carroll's uh nephew actually messaged me and he was upset about well he commented and he was upset about a video i did on damari carroll in which i basically said Demar Carroll wasn't a good player. All right, so let's keep let's keep going. The whole situation was a mess, but it's important to remember that it was caused by Morris. Yes, still Wright's decision making was sound. Carroll was actually a good player uh, before being signed by the Spurs. That simply didn't fit in. While Lyles was worth the gamble as a cheap stretch four option. Can I say this too? I think oftentimes, like 
we get on to the Spurs for being very complacent and being boring and being conservative and being just stuck in their ways with certain things, right? Like we oftentimes get onto the Spurs about that. But can I say this? I, I just want to say something real. Can I say it really quick? Okay, so this whole situation with uh, 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 Damari Carroll and, 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 and Marcus Morris and these decisions, I will say that Brian Wright has been way outside of the box than what we're used to because he is really going after it. And I feel like R.C. Buford at some point, even as great as R.C. Buford was, I, I feel like at some point he did kind of get stuck in his ways. But near the tail end of R.C. Buford being the GM, he made a decision that didn't pan out, and that was the Lucas Samanich decision. And I feel like that was a gamble. And it seems like ever since then, the Spurs have made more and more gambles. So this whole thing where like we get onto the Spurs for not doing anything. I feel like they try. I think they really, really try. I mean, to the point where they even try to go after Ben Simmons, like they try, but at the same time, it's only so much you can do when you're a small market. And I think that we were very resourceful with what we had. So good job Spurs. I'm willing to cut him some slack here. Uh, wait, did I read this? Carol was actually a good player before being signed by the Spurs that simply didn't fit in while Lyles was worth the gamble as yeah. Uh, and Ly Lyles did fit in uh, better than Mark Carroll did. I'm willing to cut him some slack here, but the decision not to trade LaMarcus Aldridge during the 2020 offseason when he still had value was inexcusable. At the time, Aldridge was coming off a season in which he averaged 18.9, 7.4 rebounds, and 1.6. Woo! Woo! Ooh, those are some good numbers. I don't remember that. Therefore, Wright should have traded him ahead of the final year of his contract, especially with Yaka Pirtle uh, waiting in the wings to replace him. Um, maybe, but that see, that was another one of those situations where when we brought LaMarcus Aldridge back, it was pretty much an agreement with them that, yeah, we're you're here. So I don't know. Uh, true, though. He could have. Uh, still, he opted to bring Aldridge back only to see his value plummet. Aldridge was later brought out Mm, excuse me after Wright was unable to find a suitable trade worse yet Wright made the same mistake with Patty Mills and Rudy Gay I I, I don't know do you guys think that we could have got anything for Patty Mills and Rudy Gay see that's the thing that's the thing the Spurs and I don't know if this is going to be the case going forward okay because the culture is going to have some type of cultural shift all right we're having a cultural shift whether we want to or not things will be different once Popovich is no longer the coach it, it's just a matter of just circumstance okay and i have to say this the reason behind not trading patty mills rudy gay and lamarcus aldridge i would have said is the reason before would be it kind of helps bring in older guys and you can sign them and they will know that their job is pretty secure with the san antonio spurs and it's more of a family atmosphere but with this inevitably being a cultural shift i understand where our boy uh what's his name again oh crap oh there we go cal cal Durrett is coming from with that because yeah now that we're going into kind of a different realm these spurs are a little different they're they're a little more cutthroat <laughs> they're willing to just trade you if they have to and you know it, it has to be that way you have to do something different um especially when you're going through a scenario we're not really used to all right, anyway, valuing Brian Wright's tenure with the Spurs. So here we go. All in all, while there have uh, been some missteps, Wright has actually been solid as GM of the Spurs. I agree. With the time now in a rebuild, he's particularly done a good job of stockpiling picks, including adding a first and several second. Um, with those assets, Wright can do a number of things, such as moving up uh, in the 2022 NBA draft or trading their two second rounders for an additional first round pick. And I agree. In addition to a lottery pick, he'll also have significant cap space that he can use to help upgrade the roster or rent it out to other teams in exchange for assets. Therefore, the Spurs are in a strong position going forward and a lot of credit goes to Wright, who has done a good job as GM thus far. I completely agree. This was a fabulous article, man. I actually do not regret reading this whatsoever. Um, I, I agree. I think overall, Brian Wright has done a fine job as the Spurs GM. And yeah, as Cal, I mean, I'm not going to just rehash anything he said because he said it beautifully. That's what I would have basically said is, yeah, he kind of set us up really well for the future. So 
I don't know. Um, I really want to know what you guys think, though. Do you think that he's done a good job at GM? Because a lot of people hate Brian Wright, but I'm not one of those people. But I do want to know what you guys have to say about it. Um, I'll get with you later, man. Once again, if you want to support the channel, $2 a month, become a patron or YouTube member. I'll get with you later. Uh, and uh, is there anything else I'm missing? No, nah, not really. Deuces.